Oh man, are those new XFL uniforms hot or not? Who won? Who lost? You decide. Wrong YouTube show. Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am Brandon. I still haven't picked an XFL team to root for yet, Perna. I probably need to pick one from each conference. And I think we all need an enemy like the Patriots to root against. And I have a feeling that might end up being the Houston Roughnecks. Today though, on this show, I will power rank the hell shits out of those new XFL unis, discuss some NFL news, quarterback updates, and I will freak you out right now. Yeah, I got a couple memories of this. Doesn't matter what the route is, doesn't matter what the coverage is, doesn't matter where the ball's thrown. Or what situation? Anyone share? Be good? Uh, yeah, those are between me and him. Yeah. <laughs> Stephen Belichick sounds exactly like his father. That is uncanny. If you were blind, you would not be able to tell them apart. Visually, though, Stephen somehow looks even more disheveled than his father. He looks like he would be head coach of the Tampa Bay Vipers if his mom smoked during pregnancy. Can you imagine a Belichick family dinner for the holidays? Ah. Uh, could you uh, pass the potatoes, Steven? Yeah, that was that was a good pass. Thought, thought you did a decent job of avoiding the uh, Tabasco and gravy boat, but uh, we're just focused on dessert now. On to the dessert. Let's get sports. Hey, noobs. Subscribe to this YouTube channel for continuous football content. Today's episode is sponsored by Audible. Audible is absolutely my favorite place to listen to audiobooks. Think about giving someone you love, no, 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 no. Better yet, give yourself the gift of an Audible membership. Now's the best time to do that with a special offer of up to 53% off your first three months. I devour audiobooks, and if I'm honest, I have an addiction to mysteries and thrillers. I recently listened to The Ruin and Bearskin while pretending to work out, and my favorite listen this last year was Before the Fall, not a Denver Broncos story. When you download an audiobook through Audible, the books are yours. You own them forever. Right now, for a limited time, you can get three months of Audible for just $6.95 a month. That's more than half off the regular price. Choose one audiobook and two Audible originals absolutely free. Visit audible.com slash that's good sports or just text that's good sports to 500 500. Again, that's audible.com slash that's good sports for their best deal yet. Take advantage. Now, I will give you those sexy, sexy XFL uniforms in just a minute, but the number one story today is that after this prophecy finally came true. He's been telling us this for over 10 years about Dallas. No, it's the Bills. Buffalo all the way this time. Three times. The third time is a charm. Dallas is going down, Gary. Only Buffalo is going to win it. Dallas is going down. Just a mere 27 years later, and the internet found Bill's guy, AKA Mark Miller, and we have a follow-up to the greatest soundbite in football folklore. This is for all you Bill's fans out there. Wanting to know, where did Mark Miller go? Well, I got a message for you 27 years later, Gary. Dallas went down, Gary. Only Buffalo won that game. Dallas went down! Somebody get that man a Bills starter jacket and a hooker for Christmas. He deserves it. There's never been a guy I have wanted to buy a beer for so bad in my life. Dallas went down! God bless you, Bills guy. Now the XFL revealed its new uniforms. If you don't live in one of the eight XFL cities, you can choose to pick your team based on looks. Basically the way Tinder works. Every player will wear the number 20 to represent the perfect vision the XFL has for the future of the league and not the short-sightedness we all witnessed with the AAF. I thought the DC Defenders uniforms were a little too on the nose for Washington DC though. A bunch of faceless men pretending to uphold our freedom in Washington? Come on, stick to sports, Defenders. Another former Raider quarterback, Matt McGloin, will be slinging the rock for the Atlanta 
Falcons knockoffs, the New York Guardians. You've got the DC Defenders, the New York Guardians. It's almost like the XFL is telling us we're all fucked and we need serious protection. In terms of power ranking these unis, uh, remember, I went to art school instead of real college, so my opinion on aesthetically pleasing uniforms is better than whatever your lesser right brain is telling you. Number eight, my least favorite, the Seattle Dragons. Something about seeing green, orange, and blue together is unappealing. I love me some orange and blue, but that green is like some asshole decided to disgustify my orange and blueberry smoothie by putting fucking kale in it. Number seven, the Houston Roughnecks. Lack of creativity here. You're the Texans colors with the Oilers logo. Real original, Houston. Six and five is a tie between the LA Wildcats and the DC Defenders. Four through one was tricky because I actually like these uniforms, but I will give four to St. Louis and three to the New York Guardians. I think black and red is the most masculine color scheme. It reminds me of all of the blood I spilled down in the coal mines before YouTube was invented. Still not sure why I had to carry buckets of blood into the coal mines, but the pay was fair. St. Louis looks like a sleek Detroit Lions who would also have hope. Plus, St. Louis deserves something nice on the football field after what Kroenke did to that city. And number two, this might shock you, but I like the Tampa Bay Vipers uniforms. Sure, they're a Florida man's Oregon Ducks, but I like the fact that they are bold. The reason I hate the Roughnecks is because it's the safest looking uniform of the group. I respect risk takers. That's why Magic Johnson was always my favorite athlete. Which leaves the Renegades as number one. They're the Carolina Panthers, but with a slightly bigger bulge. Had they went with hot pink instead of hints of red, they may have been the best uniforms in football history. Now I will jump into the XFL, give you a full video once that season actually approaches. Real quick though, I wanted to give you their quarterbacks. A few notable players. The DC Defenders, quarterback Cardale Jones with Tyree Jackson backing him up. Plus they have Max McCaffrey, Jeffrey, brother to Christian and son of Eddie. All three of those guys did see some time in the NFL. Roughnecks quarterbacks, Connor Cook and Philip Walker. Guardians QB, again, Matt McGloin and Marquise Williams. Plus they have Mikhail McKay at wide receiver and he played pretty well in the AAF. Renegades quarterback, Landry Jones, former Steeler and Philip Nelson, who has a very checkered past due to assault charges in college. Vipers quarterback Aaron Murray and Taylor Cornelius. Murray bounced around the NFL and ended up uh, QBing the Atlanta Legends in the AAF last spring. Every Legends quarterback was terrible. The Battlehawks, Jordan Tayamu. Jordan Tayamu, Tayamu from Ole Miss and Brogan Roback of That's Good Sports Best Named Players fame. Also, wide receiver DeMorne Pearson L, who played well in the AAF. Dragons QB, you've got Brandon Silvers and Joe Callahan. Silvers was the only good quarterback the Express found. And finally, the LA Wildcats, Luis Perez, king of the AAF until Garrett Gilbert stole that crown from him. Gilbert, of course, is now the Browns backup quarterback in Cleveland behind Baker Mayfield. And those are your XFL Uni updates. On to NFL. The New Orleans Saints have re-signed linebacker Manti Teo. Or did they? Ron Rivera may have been fired this week, but not before Christian McCaffrey got him to say yes to a lifetime commitment. Run CMC posted this photo to his Instagram account, and my only thought was, did he go to Jared? Because we all know a first round draft pick can afford that shit. Rivera did give a press conference after being fired, which is unusual, but a nice sign that things are amicable with him and the Panthers. Rivera said he was actually excited about the change because now he doesn't have to figure out what the hell to do with Kyle Allen and Cam Newton. Rivera will definitely be coaching in 2020. Now, 49ers broadcaster Tim Ryan has been relieved of his broadcasting duties. Apparently, Ryan thought this would be the best way to describe Lamar Jackson's play fake ability. He's really good at that fake, Lamar Jackson, but when you consider his dark skin color with a dark football with a dark uniform, you could not see that thing, Ryan said on air. I mean, you literally could not see when he was in and out of the mesh point, and if you're a half step slow on him, in terms of your vision, forget about it, he's out of the gate. 
The only other guy I know who thought that much about skin was Hannibal Lecter. The biggest flaw though with Tim Ryan's hypothesis is he forgot about the control test. If defenders were at a disadvantage because of ball camouflage, why the fuck have the Browns never won a Super Bowl? Give Baker brown gloves, and with those brown home jerseys, you could never, ever track a football. I mean, what kind of asshole talks about skin color as a competitive advantage? My question for this final play though, how can you tell where the goal line is? Goal line, white. Snow, white. Christian McCaffrey, white. What is this, a vampire weekend concert in Antarctica? Even if they cross the goal line, there's no way to tell. It's like trying to find a grain of salt in a mound of cocaine. Except, not nearly as fun, right guys? Whoa, yeah, no, no, no. You, you, can, you can reference skin color if it's your own skin color. That's the deal. Gardner Minshew was named the starting quarterback in Jacksonville again this week. Now, I will always be thankful for Nick Foles, but Minshew might actually be the long-term solution for the Jags. Next to Liberty Mutual though, Nick Foles is the most expensive insurance policy on earth. But having him as a backup at that price is okay when you're paying your starting quarterback wages on par with an actual gardener. In my opinion, you can't overpay for a backup when that backup ceiling is Super Bowl MVP. That's what I'm gonna tell myself if Joe Flacco is on the Broncos roster in 2020. Now Devlin Hodges named the starter for the Steelers again this week because unlike Mason Rudolph, he is not terrible at playing quarterback. It's crazy, with all of the bullshit the Steelers have been through this season, I keep forgetting that they are a playoff team right now with a winning record. Hodges, AKA Duck, does look the most like Ben Roethlisberger. Not behind center, but when you take low angle photos of his giant head. Josh Allen had the highest completion percentage of any quarterback week 13, and with wins against the Jets and Giants on the road, the Bills still have more wins than the Giants at MetLife Stadium this season with two which is insane because the Giants played a road game at MetLife against the Jets. We will get one last look at Eli Manning though, who will start over Danny Nickel Knuckles, who has a mild to moderate high ankle sprain, depending on which reports you read. The Giants have the Monday night game in Philly. Eli, his career record is 116 and 116, which is dangerous. A loss probably means he ends his career with a losing record. One win and he's above 500, but he's gotta beat a desperate Philly team on the road. It's really hard to root against Philly because of what they did to the Patriots in the Super Bowl. And it's really hard to root against Eli Manning because of what he did to the Patriots in the Super Bowl. But since Eli beat them twice, and for his legacy, I hope he finishes with a winning record. And finally, Sean McVay is back in everyone's good graces with the best quote of the week. He was asked why running back Todd Gurley's workload has increased. McVay said, it's because of me not being an idiot which is how I would handle every press conference as a head coach. Why did you guys win today? Well, I wasn't an idiot calling plays. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, at Brandon Perna, if you care to follow me on other social media platforms. Apparently, in 2019, that is very important. If you're not relevant on more than one social platform, you ain't shit. And I, I just want to be shit. Help me become shit.